Hi guys, welcome to our very first state to review paper for biology. I'm your host, Ms. Bayekem, and today we'll be doing the May June 2015 CXC Pass paper. Let us begin. So, question one. Items one refer to the following data recorded by students who observe some organisms in their natural habitat. So, usually when I get a question like this, I normally move to the actual question before I go through the table. So question one, which organism is most likely an insect? So now I know that I'm looking for characteristics of an insect. So let's just go to the table. Number of body segments. So insects normally have three body segments, which is the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Number of legs. So they normally have six pairs of legs. So three is looking okay. The presence of wing, they always have one pair of wing, and then the color is usually black. So I'll go with three. So that's C. Question two, which of the fallen organisms occupies the poor tropic level in the food chain below? So we have the cabbage, which is the producer, the caterpillar, which is the primary consumer, small bird, which is the secondary consumer, and then the hawk, which is the tertiary consumer. So if we should count one, two, three, four, then the hawk would be in the fourth tropic level. Question three, which of the following relationships may present harm to one of the following organisms involved? So I is commensalism. So commensalism, one organism benefits, but the other is not harmed. So that's out of it. Parasitism, one organism benefit, but the other is harmed, which is the host. Predation, one organism benefits, and the other is harm, which is the prey. Then mutualism, as the word suggests, it's mutual. So both organisms benefit. So the answer would be anything with two and three. So let's just look, and that would be C. Items four refer to the following diagram, which shows an apparatus used for collecting organisms. Move to the question. The apparatus is most suitable for collecting a ants, B slug, C moth, D spiders. So let's just go back to the diagram and based on the structure of the diagram, it would only be suited for collecting ants. Which of the following organisms are most important in biodegradation? A bacteria, B vultures, C omnivores, D earthworms. So earthworm is important in biodegradation. Omnivores, no. Vultures, no. Bacteria, yes. So we're stuck between bacteria and earthworms. So the question answers now, which of the following organisms are most important? So the one would be most important would be a bacteria. Six, which of the following gases does not contribute to the greenhouse effect? So we have A, methane. B, carbon dioxide, C, carbon monoxide, D, chlorofluorocarbon. So the answer would be C, carbon monoxide. All the others contribute to the greenhouse effect. Seven, replanting trees on a bare hillside is an example of A, conservation and afforestation. No, because we're replanting. So there is nothing on the hillside for us to conserve. So that would be out of it. B, preservation and conservation. As we said, there the hillside is bare. There's nothing there to conserve nor preserve. So that's out of it. C, restoration. Yes, we want to restore the bare hillside, but we still have preservation here. So that's out of it because there's nothing there to preserve. D, reforestation and restoration. So based on elimination, our answer would be D. Number eight. Which of the following factors contribute to increased population size? So we have I, ability to resist disease. Yes, because if you are resisting disease, that means you're thriving. Two, inadequate water supply. No, because if you don't have enough water, you may eventually die. Three, too much or too little sunlight, and that can affect organisms living or dying. So that's out of it. And then four, small number of predators. 
So if there's a small enough number of predators that mean that a organism or a population would thrive. So I'll go with anything with I and four, I and four, and that's B. Number nine, when compared to a cheek cell, a muscle cell contains more A vacuole, B ribosome, C mitochondria, D chromosome. So the answer would definitely have to be C mitochondria. Items 10 to 11 refers to the following diagram of a plant cell. So this is the plant cell. Like I said, go to the actual question. Which of the following labeled structures is responsible for controlling cellular activity? So from way before, we already know that this is the nucleus. So we have to look which one is the nucleus. And we know this is the vacuole because it is a permanent vacuole and it's large. And then the nucleus would be four. So the answer would be four. That's D. Which of the following labeled structure is not found in an animal cell? And based on what is labeled, so we have to know what, what are the names of all the labeled organelles. So we know this is the vacuole. We know this one is the nucleus. So I would definitely be the mitochondria and two here would definitely be the chloroplast. So the only thing here that is not in an animal cell would have to be the chloroplast and that would be two and two is represented by B. So 11 is B. So question 12. By which two processes does the dissolved minerals from the soil move into the roots of the plant? A, osmosis and diffusion. That's a no. B, active transport and osmosis. No. C, diffusion and active transport. Yes. So the answer would be C. Let's just look what D is talking about. Transpiration, pull and osmosis. So the answer is C, diffusion and active transport. Because water entered the roots via diffusion, but they're telling us also dissolved minerals and active transports allow minerals to enter. Number 13. Autotropic nutrition does not occur in. So autotropic nutrition, organisms that make their own food. A, a moss. B, zooplankton. C, tomato plant. D, blue, green, algae. So the only thing that would be out would be the zooplankton because they're animal based and they don't have any chlorophyll to make their own food. Question 14. Items 14 refers to the following diagram. Like I said, I normally move to the question. If the bubbles given off by the plants were collected and tested, the gas present would most likely be. So now we have to go back to the diagram to look what's happening and then determine what the gas would be. So now we're seeing we have a light source here. Then we have a beaker with pond weed or water weed and pond water. And then we see some bubbles. So the bubbles here would represent the gas. So based on what I'm seeing, this looks like photosynthesis happening. And if photosynthesis is happening and gas is being given off, so that gas would have to be oxygen. All right, so that's A. 15. The intense yellowing of leaves is most likely due to a deficiency of, and that would be C, magnesium. Question 16. Item 16 refers to the following table, which shows the result of food tests performed on three food samples, X, Y, and Z. The samples X, Y, and Z respectively most likely contain... X, a violet color with sodium hydroxide and copper sulfate. So X is a protein. Y, a blue-black precipitate with iodine. Y is a starch. And Z, orange precipitate when heated with Benedict's reagent after hydrolysis. Y is a non-reducing sugar. So now we have protein, starch, non-reducing sugar, protein, Protein starch and reducing sugar. So 16 is D. 17. Excess amino acids in the diet are A. Passed out in the feces. 
B, converted to fat and stored. C, converted to urea in the liver, then excreted. D, taken directly to the bladder for excretion in the urine. And the answer would be C, converted to urea in the liver, then excreted. Items 18 refers to the following information. A man has poor, poor night vision. His gum bleed whenever he brushes his teeth. Which two vitamins are most likely lacking in his diet? So if he has poor night vision, he lacks vitamin A. His gum bleed, that's vitamin C. So the answer is C and A. That would be C. Number 19. The surface area of the lung is greatly increased by A, a double membrane of the puria, B, large numbers of alveoli, C, dense network of capillaries, and D, branching of the bronchioles. So the answer would be B, large number of alveoli. Question 20. Which of the following is an effect of nicotine found in cigarette smoke? So we have A, increased heart rate, B, increased beating of the cilia, C, reduced oxygen transport by the blood, D, increased mucus production in the cell line in the respiratory passage. The answer would be A, increased heart rate. 21. Items 21 refers to the following diagram of the blood vessels. Which of the following correctly identifies the blood vessels? So let's just go back to the diagram. Looking at the diagram, we know that two is the capillary because it's the smallest. So all the ones with two in the capillary are in play. That's A and D. And now let's just look at the diagram. Three has a larger lumen. So three would be the vein. And then I would be the artery. So that would be arteries, capillaries, and vein. And that's D. 22. Which of the following components of blood could surround and engulf pathogen? So we're looking at these components. So we have A. A is a white blood cell. Looks like a neutrophil. B. B is also a white blood cell. Looks like a phagocyte. C is the red blood cell. So that's out. And D is platelet. So the answer would be B because it's the phagocyte. And phagocyte engulf bacteria. That's literally its definition. 23. Which of the following are involved in the formation of blood clots? That's self-explanatory. That's the platelets. Immunization is most effective in controlling the spread of a communicable disease if A. A vaccine is administered to an uninfected individual. B. A serum is administered to an uninfected individual c a vaccine is administered to an infected individual d a serum is administered to an infected individual so usually if i get a question like this i normally read over the question and go back through the responses if i was not sure of the answer so 24 again immunization is most effective in controlling the spread of a communicable disease if a, a vaccine is administered to an uninfected individual. B, a serum is administered to an uninfected individual. C, a vaccine is administered to an infected individual. And then D, the serum is administered to an infected individual. So the answer would be A, a vaccine is administered to an uninfected individual. Then 25, which of the following statement is not true of the xylem of a flowering plant? So now we're looking for things that doesn't exist in the xylem of the flowering plant. So it's not true of it. So we have A, it is non-living. B, it contains a mitochondria. C, it has lignified walls for support. D, it transport water and mineral salts. So all of this is true of the xylem except B, it contains mitochondria. Remember, the xylem is non-living and mitochondria provides energy. If it's non-living, it doesn't need energy to do anything. So 26, which of the following are reasons why transpiration is important to plants? So I, water and dissolved minerals are transported to the leaves. Two, leaves are cooled. Three, unwanted water is excreted from the leaves. So it would be 
I and two, and that would be A, water and dissolved minerals are transported to the leaf and then the leaves are cooled. Twenty-seven. Item 27 refers to the following diagram which shows cells from the stem of a plant. The part labeled X is D. That's the companion cell and that's D. So 27 is D. 28. Food is stored in the bulb of an onion plant. So A. Provide food for humans. B. Provide for the growth of new plants from the buds. C. Prevent the plant from having to photosynthesize continuously. D. Provide food for developing embryos in the next growing season. The answer would be B. Provide for the growth of new plants from the buds. 29. Which of the following would not represent a form of excretion in plants? A. Gases diffusing through the stomata. B. Tannins being stored in dead tissues. C. Water vapor diffusing through the epidermis. And then D. Stored calcium oxalate crystals in leaves during leaf fall. So the answer would be water vapor diffusing through the epidermis. And question 30. Although glucose is found in the blood plasma, it does not appear in the urine because of A. Osmosis, B. Secretion, C. Ultrafiltration, and D. Selective Reabsorption. So the answer would be D. Selective Reabsorption. So guys, thanks for watching this video. Now we're at the end. See you next week when I do the other 30. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like the content. Thank you. Bye.